Howdy partners, and uh, welcome back to the Ironlands. So, yeah, um, this is going to be another tricky week in a sense because, yet again, I'm coming straight from hours and hours of DMing a game of Burning Wheel, going straight into doing Iron Sworn. So, an intense day. Anybody who's ever done or is familiar with Burning Wheel knows that it's not just like a... If for, for either side, whether you're playing it or running it, there's a lot of, you know, constant trying to think and making pressure and uh, is, is an intense experience. So I'm still kind of coming down from that. My general schedule with my friends and everything is uh, we do RPGs from like 1 p.m. until usually 6.30 is when I, I make the call that I need to leave. So I was running it today doing like, yeah, around down to five hours when you factor in when we actually got started. Uh, five hours of that, then I drive home, try and get ready to get into a different mindset of, you know, completely different rules, and then more importantly, like, you know, both of these games are ones where I've got a, uh, you know, burgeoning campaign world developing and trying to determine, like, okay, well, who are all the key players and what's going on and um, how's this world developing? And so it's a, a major shift from, like, okay, leave that world behind, now it's time to go back into the Iron Lands, something completely different. And uh, in order to make that transition smoother, I think I need to uh, open up a cider and uh, kind of relax a little bit, have something to drink, and uh, smoothly transition in. Because as you might remember, we left things off in a bit of a, uh, I mean, as always, a sticky situation with our hero, Coyote Devereaux. Um, the last time we played this game, the very last thing that happened was Coyote Devereaux getting completely out of his mind on a magical version, a, a magical analog of PCP out in the desert. He had just fought with, a, with an enormous wolf and in his drug-induced state managed to, like, rip through its throat with his bare hands and teeth and he's just covered in this animal blood out of his mind. He got separated from his, uh, the small group he had in what was kind of going pretty well. We're used to Coyote having a lot of failure and um, having to struggle along with not being able to do what he wants to do. But we actually had had, things were finally starting to come together. We had a, the, the elements of a plan to actually, you know, defeat Red Robert. Trick him into uh, this ambush. That is until, of course, Coyote managed to lose <clears throat> both the horses, uh, on the wagon that they were taking to get back to town. But anyway, uh, that's more or less where we left off. We should get back into it. Uh, let me have another swig real quick. <clears throat> All right. In addition to the cider, I, of course, also have uh, the standard. I still have pizza rolls back in my place. And uh, basically, for as long as I have pizza rolls, the answer to what should I have to eat is pretty much defaulted to pizza rolls, unless I can convince myself that there is some better option, and there isn't. I mean, let's, let's be 100% clear. There just, there just isn't a better option. It's going to be pizza rolls until the bag runs out. So I've got some more back there. I'll be grabbing them throughout the show. But let us finally make our move over into the, um, the in-game view. As you see, we've made a little bit of progress. Um, We've hit a couple of milestones on stealing the caravan and delivering it back to Red Robert. Um, we've hit a milestone on Help Chops Frame Red Robert. I'm trying to remember what was how specifically we earned that milestone. Um, we did something. Uh, uh, was it the... I honestly can't remember. Fuck, I should have... Uh, I should have like gone back to watch the old episode because like we hit that milestone somehow, but I don't remember what it was. I remember that we we drank with chops and everything, and maybe that counted for it. But the conclusion of that scene was swearing the vow in the first place. So there's something else that happened. I'm echoing. Really, that's very surprising. Um, let me check something real quick. It's good to know, but I don't know why I would be. There's, um, yeah, the audio should only be coming from one source. I don't have a speaker on or anything. Um, yeah, weird. Let me see if there's any way I can deal with that. That's, that's very odd. Um, but it's definitely echoing. Like, you can, uh, 
If I if I snap in front of this mic, you'll hear it again. Hold on. More than once. Looking into it. Oh, you know what? I know. I I know what it is. Okay, hold on. Is that better? There we go. I've been using uh, that. That should that should have taken care of it. So. I was doing some recordings lately, and I had some effects that were still... This mic was running through, and one of them was a... Uh, uh, I, I think it was hitting a reverb effect and all that. But there we go. Much better. Now I've got... It's no longer going to those effect sends, so we're, we're all good. Um, there we go. Thank you for pointing that out. I'm glad that we were able to take care of that before we really got started. Uh, it was like I'm in case. Yeah, I had some reverb on there for some recording purposes, but we don't need those right now. Thank you for helping me out with that. Uh, but yeah, why? How did I hit that first milestone on helping Chops frame Red Robert from murder? I want to say it was something that must have happened in the caravan. Uh, I know we. Um, yeah. Oh, um, now it's down on volume? Alright. That's weird. No, that should have given it. That should have given it a bit of a boost. Uh, hopefully, better enough. All sorts of. This is why it always pays to do the audio test that I never have time to do. It always pays to do that thing that I don't. So really, it never pays. In my in my reality, it never pays to do it because I don't. Yeah. Well, I will trust that I earned that milestone. I just don't remember how. Oh, well. Ch check the tape. It's in there somewhere. Um, but, yeah. So, our current situation... Out in the middle of the desert. I think we, we start off on just, like... We kind of fade back into the episode, and it's, like, really, really high up. We see just the, the large expanse of the Ironlands and the dust blowing through. And we can just make out as it gets... As the camera gets kind of... Moving across the landscape, we can see this little speck of movement, and it's getting we're getting a little bit closer, and we, we start making out that it's it's some human form moving very erratically, and uh, not inhumanly, but just like savagely. There's a uh, a lot of just very a lot of twitchiness to it, just lumbering through, and um, and potentially and reacting to things that are like swatting at the air and uh just having reactions to things that are that are not there um I just remember i was behind the caravan i found something suspicious uh no i mean that was not the last thing that happened um it we we had found that uh what what i've decided is called red venom uh we we found that and then ultimately there, there are some things that happened since then we wound up Getting the caravan, uh, the wagon from the caravan, going off towards town, but then a horse broke loose and I had to chase after it, and then I lost both horses, and now I'm out in the desert and all that. Um, so we're, we're a little bit beyond what you remember. But it happened. So yeah, he's, he's out there and is, uh, it's like swatting at the air at things that don't exist, and it's very important that I make this draw. Oh, you know what? I forgot to open up. I'm going to need the, uh, the RPG open so I know how these moves work. Let me open that real quick. That would be a good thing to have. Because I'm going to need to undertake a journey, I think, to get back to, uh... Get back to town. Um... One second here. Where is it? There we go. Iron Sworn. Looking through my various RPGs. Because indeed, as you may or may not know, Iron Sworn is available as a free PDF, and a wonderfully laid out PDF at that. So, if you have not already picked it up, I highly recommend you go to ironsworn.rpg.com and grab yourself this PDF that I'm looking at right now. You can also get things like the rules reference and the moves reference. All sorts of really, really handy stuff. It's great. Iron Sworn. Get it. Support, support Sean Tompkin. So, yeah, I need to, uh, I need to undertake a journey. Because I am lost at this point. I think it's, like, have no idea what's going on. The sun's beating down, which is making me just sweat all the more. And is dehydrating me. It's just making the effects of the red venom worse. 
I think if we, as we see it instead from Coyote's eyes, as opposed to this aerial view, uh, instead of the nothingness and the dust, we're now, like, all of the landscape is just, like, vibrating and is, is redder than we remember. Because we, we still see, like, these insanely bloodshot eyes. Bloodshot to the point that the, the uh, sclera, the whites, almost look entirely red. There's not. You can still see whites through them. It's just that there's so many capillaries that are all bloodshot, but they look almost solid red. And so, like, and it's affecting his vision. Everything just has this, uh, has, like, a little bit of a red mistiness to it and is, is just shaking. Nothing is still. Um, and he's trying to find his bearings to get back to town. So, let us see this adventure move. We have Undertake a Journey. Uh, so we just set this journey. I think that this is a, uh, I think this is a dangerous journey. Because he's out in the middle of the wilderness, uh, really not especially equipped. And he's, uh, he's kind of out of his mind right now. So, we're going to set up a dangerous journey to get back to town. Oh, we already... I guess we already did that. But I disagree. I think I was going easy on myself last time when I said that was troublesome. Let's... Let's go whole hog on this and make this dangerous. There we go. A dangerous journey. Get back to town. Um, so, yeah. For, oh, you know what? It was probably... It was a troublesome journey, but... The re okay, the reason why it was like that is uh, this journey was before I got lost in the desert. This was just the journey back to town from, like, the caravan. And so that was troublesome. Not explicitly by the rules, but I feel like... I feel like this has to be upgraded to dangerous. Just the situation has changed enough that this feels more appropriate now. Um, so I'm... I'm the plans have changed, and I'm making this now dangerous. Two progress per waypoint instead of three. So, for each segment of your journey, roll plus wits. The thing that he does not have this is only going to get worse. And how is his oak? Right, his momentum is reset to two already. Um, so I may want to set up for this. I may want to make sure that I get some kind of advantage first. Um, so if I'm just doing my wits right now, it's going to go real poorly real quickly. And it's just going to get worse and worse. And if I keep getting misses on this, I'm never going to make progress. I'm going to get waylaid by perilous events. It's just, it's going to be bad. So. Oh, okay. So. I could gather information. This would also, like, because there's all these tracks of the horses and stuff I can maybe try and find. That would also be rolling my wits, however. And, um. If I have a miss on that... Yeah, there's just... I need to avoid using my... I, I need to somehow not get lost and find my bearings without using my wits. It's a tricky ask. Um, this is the exact type of scenario Coyote is not set up for, being all by himself like this. So... Um, hmm, how, how's he going to get out of this pickle? Okay. First thing I want to do... Is... Um, Oh man, that's that's getting even worse actually. I, I was thinking of like, oh, I could uh, I could try and and make camp out here in the wild, in the wild. Um, yeah. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. Granted, it's technically just as bad as. Oh wait, no, there's okay. I'm. If I make camp, I can kind of prepare myself for some of the inevitable and take things like momentum or resupply and stuff like... Actually, I can't resupply, but I could... I could heal up a little bit. I could prepare for camp, but there's... Or for, for the journey. There's there's various things I could do. But for a couple of reasons. One being the narrative. It, it doesn't make sense for me to be making camp right now. And two, I just... I don't think I'd have really good luck on that either. I'd be rolling my supply, which is down to plus one. I've had to spend a lot of money on things uh, for various reasons. So, um, I can try and secure an advantage, and, uh, I'm just, I, I'm having trouble finding any ways that I can avoid using, I think I might get stuck into having to just rely on my wits and know that things are going to go poorly, because it's just, I can't see a lot of ways I could be like, oh, I'll just be dexterous about this, or, 
or brave like even heart uh i could um yeah if i'm trying to f some not be lost wits is kind of what i need to do so yeah i am first going to try and secure an advantage um, because I think I'd, this will go better, if I can only get a weak hit, this is still better for me than, uh, otherwise. I need to try and first, um, ob observe my surroundings with wits and, like, try and see if I can find tracks or something that will allow me to, uh, get any kind of indication of where I came from. And I'm gonna do really poorly on this, but who knows, maybe the dice will, will be on my side. So let's roll our plus wits. We definitely don't have any bonuses on this or anything. Um, this will just be the session where Coyote dies in the desert in like 20 minutes, and then I'm like, well, what are we going to do for the rest of the time? Hell yeah. Unsurprisingly, so a, a 9 and a 10, almost as well as I could possibly roll in terms of, well, well on the dice, poorly for my what I need out of this game. Basically, as poorly as I, that could go. Except for the action die tried. It, it really did. It, it rolled a five. But, um... Yeah, it's a miss on securing advantage. So, I fail or my assumptions betray me. I need to pay the price. So, I think the way that would work for this is, like... Um... I, I think I, I, I'm trying to find a way to, to get a way out of this hole. And not just be forced into one kind of action. So, I think the, the price that'll happen is, um... I think there should be some nomadic people out here of some sort that, like... I'm going to find what I think are, are animal tracks. Like, the, everything's so shifty. I think I find the the, uh, the tracks of the horses that I was chasing at one point, but it's totally not them. It's like, there's people. I think I'm going to stumble upon some people that are not especially happy to see me. Um, and uh, not because they know me personally. Most people are, are unhappy to see Coyote Devereaux because they know him as Coyote Devereaux, but... I think I stumble on somebody else's camp, and uh, I, I'm gonna roll an oracle to get a better idea of who they are and what what they're about. So first of all, I'm gonna roll a location because I want to find out like where do I stumble upon them? What, what's it like? Now some of these might not be applicable because they might be more like foresty and stuff than I'm looking for, but we might be able to draw inspiration from this. Rapids. I don't, I don't think there'd be a lot of water out here, but potentially, um, we could certainly make it a little bit less direct desert than I was initially imagining, where, like, um, maybe not rapids, but instead, like, there is some kind of spring here, um, oh, you know what could also happen here is, um, Maybe the reason why it's uh, I find water and all that is, um, what if Coyote's sense of time got really screwed up during this, and maybe he went a lot farther than he realized in stumbling away from this group. Um, I think he just kind of kept going as long as his feet took him, and uh, he is rather far from town now. Like, this could have been... Like, it honestly, I, I'm okay with the idea that this could have been days, that he's just been, he went away and nobody has any idea where he went. Um, as he just went in the wrong direction in the desert, is somehow surviving out here. But, uh, he found this, uh, this spring that leads to a, a lake. And, uh, that, that's where these people are going to have made camp. Uh, let me get a, I still don't have a great idea of who they are as people, though, so let's see. Um, I want to establish a settlement trouble I think is the closest well what are, what are these people all about just collectively as a group a rival settlement well that's certainly an easy one um, so yeah perhaps there are some people out here at least partially inspired by like native peoples in America um where, like, they, they've got a little bit more of a nomadic lifestyle, and there, there may be many of them out there, and they don't, they don't all get along. They have different views on stuff and different kind of perspectives on whose territory is whose, and, um, yeah. 
So I think there's a, a rival settlement, and so that's the assumption is that Coyote, like anybody who stumbles in, they they fear it's from. So we we names for these uh these tribes of people, um, and have something like you know, Blackfoot, and um, let's see. So I'm, I'm writing these down. So we have Blackfoot tribe is I think the uh, the people that he stumbled upon. And uh, we need one other, we need another kind of tribal name. Um, the oh, it's like I want to incorporate the word swift in. I think um, or the uh, I don't know the the shadow bears. Um, yeah, I. Call the others the Shadow Bears. Blackfoot Tribe is the one Coyote stumbled on. And then we have the Shadow Bears. Is this other tribe that they're worried about and think he's a member of. Um, and I think... Okay, so he stumbles upon this place and I think very quickly it's... Um, he's got you know, weapons leveled at his... Uh, you know spears or something aimed at his throat um just i don't know if he's in his not right enough right of a mind to uh to speak to them but i i, th I think they they see this madness in his eyes and, and he's very quickly um bound up um for everybody's safety because he, he's he's a madman um so he's he's swarmed by these people um, and they're, they're going to try, I guess I should, yeah, they're, they're going to try and, uh, and restrict him. Uh, actually, honestly, as a player, I'm not interested in, in making Coyote fight them. I'm more interested in the, uh, in some other stuff that could happen out of this. So I'm just going to say, yes, they, they succeeded that. They, um, Coyote's not going to have enough, he's not going to be able to overpower them. There's enough of them that, uh, even if he fights back a little bit, they will succeed at this. They tie him up, um... And we should have an interrogation instead. So there's the lapping sounds of uh, this this soft stream that go, and I think the um, he, he's like you know thrashing around in these uh, and just practically foaming at the mouth right now, struggling against the bonds, and uh, let's see if we can convince if we can make it convincing that. This is something that uh, they're familiar with. Well, he doesn't have enough of a presence of mind to be selling snake oils right now. Um, doesn't have the, the head to do that. But I think there's a chance that these people at least recognize the problem that he has. And um, are going to... Tr they should try and heal him. Um... Yeah, but you can't really be devious if you don't have a the presence of mind to like. It takes a presence of mind to be devious. If you're if you're just insane, then you can't really plan anything untoward. Um, see, I I think he'll come too though because there somebody in here recognizes the um, the the venom. And its effects. Uh, they they see the eyes, and uh, actually maybe let's let's not jump straight to that. I think he's not completely unintelligible right now, and she, he should have to try and defend himself in this situation when the when being asked a question about it. Um, let's see if I have a good move to accommodate this. Um, that's the one reason that I'm thinking of skipping ahead to just them doing that. Is I it's not really in the toolkit of what my character does to, like, have this, like, oh, convince you that I'm out of my mind. Like, it's trying to say, okay, like, compel is the closest thing, but it's it's a little bit weird to, um... I think the only thing that would be in his tool belt right now he'd be terrible at, which would be threatening or inciting, because he's just so hopped up right now. Um... Yeah, let, let's just, let's say that indeed, um, 
So he's a bit more on... I, I don't understand what you're saying. Um, yeah, let, let's indeed move forward with the idea that um, somebody recognizes. Some some person who is, who is learned in medicines uh, knows of the, uh, the issues that Coyote has here and has a way to... Um, to uh, brew kind of like a temporary solution. I think there's some kind of like pacifying tea or herbal blend that can bring him back a little bit of his senses for now, but it's it's not a permanent solution. Um, so I think there's a struggle as, you know, they're, uh, they've got this bowl that they're trying to force down and, you know, keeps struggling. He doesn't want to drink anything, but, you know, somebody... Somebody eventually manages to hold him still enough to uh, to force enough of this down. Uh, actually, no. If, if it's if it's meant for this situation, it's probably um, yeah. No, it's fine. They they force it down his throat. I was thinking it could maybe be an aromatic thing, but um, no. I, I like the idea of seeing this struggle and eventually getting him to because uh, he's pretty far gone. I think ideally you give a person this earlier on in the uh, situation. So time goes by. And he calms down a little bit. And, um... And the leader of this group, who is, uh... Let's get a character description real quick. Wary. You're, you're not wrong, game. Of, of course they'd be wary. Um... We're staying way at the other side of the room. I, I like the idea of kind of running with this idea of being wary and being like, it's barely even showing his face. Um, like there's a, sitting in like a shadowy corner. Um, and it's, right now it's, when, when Coyote kind of comes back to his senses, at least enough to, to notice where he is, uh, it's, it's just the two of them. And Coyote is all, you know, bound up um, near a, uh, he's like bound to a tree that uh, there, there's like a tent around this tree. Um, they're using the thickness of the trunk itself to kind of tie the uh, um, the canvas and everything. Like they're, they're using it for structural support. Um, so they're inside this tent, and there's a tree in the middle of it, and Coyote happens to be bound to it. And um, there's a deep inhale as this this person. Uh, kind of is is taking Coyote in, noticing that he is uh, his eyes starting to clear a little bit, and then he asks, "What brought you here?" I think Coyote struggles to remember for a, for a moment because it's it's also um, it's also hazy. But, uh... Alright. So, our, our first words of Coyote this, this session. Um, I think he's going to try and use some heart to compel this person to... Uh, let's see. I, or, I guess it's not a move yet, but he, he just says... I... I don't know. I... I don't remember. Not exactly, anyway. There's there's elements, there's components, little pieces here and there. Tell me what you do remember, then. Give me the pieces. He goes, well... I think I'd have a lot easier time remembering if you were... If you could untie me. It's all... It's all a very uncomfortable situation. I just... You, you think maybe you could... Uh, I, I don't think he's going to get a chance to roll here. Like I, I don't think that's a, a reasonable thing to ask for. It's like... Uh, I don't know. That's, that will come later. Tell me your tale. For there are many out in the lands who would do us harm. Where are your allegiances? And... Cody's mostly confused by it. I don't think he knows these people very well. Um, 
but I think he recognizes a little bit about the red venom that he's taken, and he he's starting to put together a little bit of the effects, and it's like how it, it's still kind of in the background. And I think what he is going to try and compel here is um, he's going to try and convince this uh, this person, like, look, I I can I'll happily tell you all that in due time, but I I don't think we have we don't have time right now. The venom. I can feel it still in the it's it's still in my veins. It's gonna come back. You need you need to help me, man. It's please, please don't don't let it take over. I I made a mistake. I should I shouldn't have had it, but I, we we don't have time for the stories now. I, I need your I need your help curing it. And uh, you 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 need to you need to get it out of me. So he's going to basically he's gonna try and compel um basically compel this uh. This leader, that will obviously need to come up with a name for at some point, compel the leader that first things first are, I'm not going to be very suitable to you. Like I'm not going to be able to help you unless you you help me first. This is uh, there's the you know, it's an order of operations thing really. Um, so. Let's roll this plus heart. I do not share a bond with these people, so I don't get the plus one on that. Um, so I think if this is successful, the... Um, Coyote will have convinced him to use something of their own supply to be a more permanent solution to his uh, red venom problem. Um, but, like... What I imagine is that the ingredients necessary to kind of, like, really purge the body in a more permanent sense of the effects of the venom, they're, they're pretty rare. And so, like, this is not something that the, uh, that the tribe would want to just get rid of for just anybody. I mean, they haven't confirmed yet that he is, uh, that he's not an enemy. Um, and so, if successful, they'll be convinced that um, he's still another human being and he needs help and he's at, like... He's scared and he needs it. Um, so let's see. I was actually kind of the the result I was hoping for because in the fiction it makes the most sense to me to get a weak hit on this so that they'll do what you want, but um, but they need they want something in return. Like that makes mo the most sense to me. Is uh, like the, yeah, sure, but I I think it's a matter of. Like, you, you're going to have to help us restock up on that. Um, so, like, the the ingredients necessary for this sort of thing are... Uh, they they are something that can be found, but it's I think it's dangerous to go and get them. And uh, so the agreement is that... You know, we, we'll give this to you now, but you... You, you will owe a... One, you're, uh, you, you will owe us a service... Like you, you need to. Uh, you'll you're gonna go out with our with our hunting party and um, and and secure what it will have cost us to bring you back out of this. And uh, yeah, I guess I guess that's really the uh, the real compromise there. Cause I, I guess there's enough of a um, you know flicker of understanding that. He, Coyote doesn't mean harm in that moment that, uh, at least for now, they've downgraded to just wary. He's not shown signs through his conversation of, like, being a, uh, uh, one of the Shadow Bears. Um, he doesn't look like one. They've got more of an opportunity to do that. So, there's a bit of a ceremony wherein, uh, you know, something is prepared over a fire, and, uh, you know, some ingredients are crushed up and powder is brought in at the, at the right moment. And uh, the room fills with uh, this... I, I, I think there's just a pot that's like... It's all done to like make this sort of like smoke that... Uh, this, this colorful purple smoke that comes out of this large like uh, iron cauldron. And... Uh, the leader of this group is like chanting along with this uh 
Like, he's, he's reciting a chant to, to make this happen. And there is a moment where the smoke starts to take a kind of, like, not humanoid form, but it, it seems to coalesce into kind of, like, an arm and a hand. And it's, like, it's these hands, like, reaching towards Coyote and, like, he, reaching towards his eyes. And so we have these, like, smoke hands that, like, each kind of cover up and that they... They start trying to like pull out this uh, this this red mist from inside his head. Like they, I think there's a, uh, I think the, the these like smoky, ghostly hands kind of like reach, and they, at first they're like around the sides of his head, but like the hands now start to enter a little bit, and then one thumb each is kind of just like, and these are you know ghostly and smoky, so it's fine. But like the thumbs are each just like over his eyes, and they're just they keep kind of like just doing this gentle rhythmic almost massage like motion to try and draw out this uh venomous sickness and uh you know it it, it works uh they, they they pull it off but uh and coyote is you know a little bit more like the, the world comes back into a kind of focus there's less of this worry that it's constantly there in the background um and there's a you know, breathe a sigh of relief. Uh, it's he just he feels more human again, and um, this chief. I, I should give him some kind of a name here. Uh, this the leader of the the Blackfoot. Um, let's see. That's right. I don't have a name thing as one of my one of my generators. Um, let's call let's call this person Mire. Um, so the leader of this group is is named Mire. Mire is the leader of, or at least. Some manner of, uh, like, if, if not the, the leader directly, some kind of, uh, like, like mystical leader uh, in charge of th that aspect of the, the more spiritual side of things. Um, so, yes, Mire comes out of the, uh, comes out of the shadows a little bit. It's still keeping a lot of distance. And uh, says to, says to Coyote... With that out of the with that out of the way. Perhaps now your loosened tongue can lead to loosened bindings. Hmm? Perhaps. Why don't you tell me about yourself, starting with starting with your name? Coyote says. Well, you can definitely start with my name. It's uh I'm named Coyote Devereaux. Coyote after, well, I think, my, I think if I recall correctly, my dad had heard some legends about uh, the coyote is some manner of great trickster spirit, and I don't think he subscribed, or not subscribed, <laughs> that's not a word he would use, I don't think he, he bought into any of that, but I think at the same time he found it, thought it was interesting, and so I, I'm Coyote, or, I guess he can't gesture right now because he's not on Todd yet. I'm Coyote. What do they, uh... What do they call you? Interesting na Interesting way to phrase that question. What do they call me? Not what is my name, but what do they call me? It is a surprising... You are from the settlements, yes? Yeah. <laughs> uh, how, how do you tell? It just seems out of character for you. Perhaps... Your father did indeed spread more to you of our people's ways than simply the tales of the coyote. For your people are all about putting the defined labels on things to know what a thing is. But you did not say, what is your name? You asked, what do, they, what do people call you? 
for a man could maybe be many things. And he like starts going off on this long tangent about the and how he's nodding along. A man could be anything, many things. But you want to know what a man would call me? Yes. Uh. I'm gonna be honest. I just kind of, I didn't really put this much thought into what I was saying. But yeah, what would a what what would a man call you? What I. If I if I want to call you something, what's What's the thing I can say that'll offend you least? That's, when you get down to it, that's what I'm going for. What what can I say that will offend you the least? Muni. Muni is what I am called by my people. I am called many other things, I'm sure far worse by those who are not of my people. But if you wish to not offend me and be, at least for now, posing as some one of my people, Mirde is your best bet. All right, all right. Well, I'm gonna turn off this fan. I think it's it's a little bit loud, and I think I'm doing. Uh, it's not so hot in here that I need it. <clears throat> Mirde is what they call me. Well, Mire. A lovely first step to having me be able to help repay that debt of. Purging that uh, terribleness from my body. Oh, and I, I, I feel like the, um, this. So the smoke pulled this essence back out of this red venomous mist out of his head, and I think it all coalesced down into this horrible, stinky brew that's now coating the inside of the pot. It's not like filled or anything, but there's just like this, this like blood-like residue on the uh, on the bottom that's like solidifying rather quickly. Um. And the more solid it gets, the more just, like, black it looks. Um, so he says, Mira, yeah, yeah. good first step to me being able to repay what you've done for me, as we discussed. If you let me go, you untie me, I'll happily join that uh, hunting party of... Uh, Hey, you know what? Hunting party. Y'all, you all, you know this area pretty well, yeah? You've, um, you'd say you're, you people very, your people are really familiar with the land? It is so. We have traveled it back and forth many a time and found found the ways to all manner of places, yes. Wouldn't it happen that that's exactly what I need right now? I'm gonna be honest with you, Mire. And that's not a specialty of mine. But, uh, I'm pretty hopelessly lost out here. I did not mean to stumble upon your camp. I'm, uh, happy that you've been friendly enough to at least help me so far, but I have no idea where I am. And I'd love to get back to where I was headed before everything went red. So, uh, I, I'm gonna put a deal out there for you. Do you do you think, just um, throwing ideas out here, you think maybe if I if I do some, if I prove myself to be on the up and up, a good person that you can trust. Is there a chance you could uh, help me get back to where I needed to go? You are on a path, Coyote. Actually, his response, I think, is going to depend on the result of the move. Um, so I think there's another compel move. Um, I'm trying to charm this person in, into uh, agreeing that they will. They can spare somebody to help me find my way back to um, to Gibbet. And uh, yeah, let's, let's see how that goes. Another weak hit here. Um, so that is again. They want something in return. Well, I already know that we need to go on the uh, the hunting trip, so it's got to be something beyond that. Um. 
Oh, it occurs to me. We've got... I forgot. I was supposed to take plus one momentum last time because it's a... Uh, when I compel, I still get the plus one momentum from before. There's just a, a price. So that's going to happen twice. Go to... Because both of these times I'll have gotten a weak hit. So I'll, my momentum will go up to four. Um... So what else does he want in return? Um, I th trying not to borrow too much from the other game I'm running, which is Burning Wheel, but there's definitely some overlaps that happen and just ideas that come up in both. I feel like this is the type of thing where um, he goes, Coyote, you seem to be on a path. As all men are. I cannot move you from the path. I cannot move you, move the path from the dis from its current destination to another. I can merely help you find where it is you're supposed to go. And I help my people. It is my service in life to guide them. If you are not of my people, there's only so much that I can do for you. And Coyote's getting ready to be like, well, you know, th thanks for nothing, man. But he adds in, but there is a way for an outsider to prove himself worthy of being considered blood to us. One can become a member of the family and in doing so is more entitled to the, our wisdom and our service. Right now there are there is one other tribe in particular who is causing a great deal of trouble. I don't know how familiar you are with our various clans, but the Shadow Bears, they have caused a great bit of mayhem. And while I am not a proponent of violence directly as a solution to a problem, there are times where it seems necessary. However, I have consulted the Vapors time and time again and have determined that part of the might of the Shadow Bear comes from a totem that their chief carries. It gives him great powers that I could not even begin to fathom, so they say. Find this totem and destroy it. Do not bring it back here. It possesses a foulness that I do not wish to infect my people. But destroy this thing. I can, I can point you in the direction of their camp. Destroy this thing for our people. And you can receive the bounty of our wisdom. And uh, Coyote is down with that idea. Um, I feel like he's got a lot of choice right now. He does ask, though, first, before before he says anything in, in response to it, and he, before I do any kind of, like, swearing an iron vow or anything like that, I think he's going to ask, um, hey, uh, I you know I, I can I can respect that we've got a lot we've all got our troubles right, but my question for you is, <sighs> Dino Dino Gibbet, the uh, the one of my people's settlements. It's uh, I don't think it's too far from here, and I think this is when the uh, yeah I I think Mire is going to say something along the lines of. I have never, I've never been there, but know of its 
the direction. Or no, I think it's more like um I I am not familiar with gibbet specifically. But I know the direction where your where your closest settlements are. They are not they, they we keep our distance by choice. If you come from that direction and you may you may not You seem to be on the level of a three days ride away. That's on horseback. When we found you, you were on foot. Coyote, if you are missing this much of your memory, and you don't remember all the details of how you got here, it is quite possible that you have been of a wrong mind for a very long time. Easily the turning of a, the turning of a set. Which I think is the way with it. Uh, maybe people in this in this world are referred to like a week. Just the, the conclusion of a week is the, the turning of a set. Um, perhaps the turning of a set. Perhaps greater. Were you in town when you were, when you were waylaid by this? Madness. I don't think so. I remember. I remember other people. I remember having us uh, coming to some kind of an agreement. It's the type of thing where I feel like when I when I get back to it all, it'll the context will help me out again. But I, there was something. Something with a. No, 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 okay, I, this can't wait, and it finally dawns on Coyote that, like, they had plans that are, like, like, Red Robber is expecting him, and, like, his dad is in trouble, he can't just wait out, like, it's, if this has been a week, it's already been too long, um, it's, there, there's no time, look, I will, and I, he, uh, I think by the, like during this conversation, I think his bonds have been slowly being let go, because, like, they're preparing to have him go out to, um, uh, secure this this thing for him, this rare ingredient. And so I think at this point, he's been loosened enough that he's got control of his arms again. And um, he suddenly gets frantic and says, no, there's there's not time. I gotta, look, I will... And he, he grabs the still hot um, lip of the iron cauldron that we that we had in the middle of this room you can hear it sizzling in his flesh as he holds on to it and says um i'm just gonna as a result of doing this lower his health by one um just for this choice he says i promise you i will re i, I will return to your people and uh and help you vanquish the uh, i i swear upon iron that i will come back to help your people and vanquish the Vanquish the shadow bears, but I have to get back to town right now. They have my father, and there's there's that kind of like glow um, that uh, from the contact point where his hand is touching the iron, and then like when he's finally done saying the vow, um, that's when his his body finally reacts and realizes it's like oh right, very hot, and he like reels his hands back. Uh, we, we need to add in this iron vow, or we need to do the swear an iron vow move. Um, see how that goes. So welcome, Wiccanator. Right, where is this? Where is swear an iron vow? So, I need to roll my plus heart. And uh, we're going to give this quest a right. So, I feel like dealing with the Shadow Bear should also be a dangerous quest. Um, they're, they're, they're rather reasonable threat. Um... So we're going to have him swear on iron to do that. Yeah, hi, Grayson. You see, he keeps decide, he keeps hopping up on my lap tonight and being like, I need your attention. And I'm like, I know, I know, but I've, I've got things. I I got to get through them. Okay, so. Oh, yeah, no, I've, I'm trying to wrap these things up, but I keep getting uh, waylaid onto other stuff. Um, 
so let's see we've got um return to help the blackfoots vanquish the shadow bears and i think i need to make that a smaller font there we go ah. really wish i could turn that off it's I, I, I don't want to do that highlight thing, but it, uh, every time I try and move something, it's I got to hold it down enough and it does it. So we have our we have a new vial that we need to swear. Um, so we need to roll hard when we swear upon iron to complete this quest. Um, I do not make this vow to a person or community with whom I share a bond, so I need to I don't get to add plus one. But there's my plus heart. Let's see how this goes. We've got a little bit of momentum. Ooh, and unfortunately, it is a miss. Um, and my momentum is not high enough to actually help me out on that. Um, so on the miss, you face a significant obstacle before you can begin your quest. Envision what stands in your way. Ask the Oracle of Unsure and choose one. You press on, suffer minus two momentum, and do what you must to overcome this obstacle, or you give up, forsake your vow. Um, I think what's interesting to me in this situation is... Um, If I, I think he's frantic enough in this moment that I can definitely see him just running out of the room and trying to escape them, um, forsaking the vow as soon as he makes it. So forsake, forsake the vow has its own problem. Um, but yeah, I, I think he's. Uh, oh, Z, thanks, thanks for that, host. Yeah, I, I think indeed. He's going to run out of this room um, now that his bonds are free. And, the, you know, they're yelling at him, Stop! Stop him! Wait! You made a, you made a promise, Coyote! Are you, he's just uh, yelling after him to the best that he can anyway. But um, now can you have some of my birthday? Yeah, if you can come here and collect it, you can have some of my birthday. Um, he's going to have to... There we go. So the forsake your vow move. Um, when you renounce your quest, betray your promise, or the goal is lost to you. So in this case, a betrayal that happened before the quest even began. Clear the vow and endure stress. You suffer minus spirit equal to the rank of your quest. So in dangerous quest, we lose two spirit. Oh, shit. Bring our spirit all the way down to zero. We are... We are so just thrown by everything that's going on so stressed out um so yeah we, we clear that see now we're, we're we're finally clearing our vows it's fine um if the vow was made to a person or community with whom you share a bond test your bond when you next meet okay well we it's not so it's fine we we run off knowing that basically um so I, I think it's, you know, you face significant obstacle before you can begin your quest. Envision what stands in your way. I think what stands in the way is just that there's there's not enough trust here and they're they're not going to let me go and I need to make a run for it. And, um, and I think that's what's going to happen. I'm going to, so I, I run out of the tent and I, and I see, you know, tied up where they've got their own, you know, horses and things like that. They, the community is set up. Um... I think I need to face danger attempting something risky or reacting to an enemy threat. So I'm doing this with speed, agility, or precision. I'm just like quickly trying to escape before anybody can grab me again. I see where the horses are. I need to get this and get out of here. Um, there's, there's no time. I need to just run as fast as I can until I find something. Um, so I'm going to roll my plus edge and see what happens here. Can we actually have some full-on success tonight? Had a couple of weak hits. Can we get a full, just strong hit? There it is. Cool. Uh, yes, we can. Strong hit. So, uh, on a strong hit, you are successful. Take plus one momentum. So, Coyote runs across out of the tent. And, like, basically, as soon... Like, 
So what happened is his bonds were cut loose. He runs over, grabs the lip of a still hot iron pot, swears a vow on it, realizes immediately uh, as his hand as he takes his hands off and is shaking the burning that uh, he sees in the chief's face and like a paranoia builds and he sees all around that uh, they're not going to they're not going to let him do this. They're not going to let him leave, and he just needs to run away right now. And uh, and he knows that if he does this, there's there's no coming back. They'll kill him. So he he knows he's forsaking this vow. That there's he'll never wind up facing this, and that disheartens him a little bit. But in the moment, he's uh, he's so panicked that he just he races over, grabs his horse, and gets on and starts bolting away in just. A direction. He's, he still is pretty much lost and doesn't know where he's going. Uh, those kind of go hand in hand. Um, so, I think it's time to undertake a journey. Uh, he's going to try and find a waypoint on his way. Now, unfortunately, as we know, uh, his tr dangerous journey on the way back to town is... Uh, not going to be very likely to succeed well because he's got he has to roll his wits but at least he's built up a little bit of momentum so can we get to a waypoint let's see if we can do it um so rolling our wits trying to just kind of get lucky and find our way back in the right direction um yeah not so much that being said we could turn that into a oops we could turn that into a weak hit. We've got a three and a five. We've got enough momentum. I could turn that into a weak hit. What would that mean for me? Um, okay, on a weak hit, you you reach a waypoint and mark progress, but suffer minus one supply. I think I got to go with that. So I use the last of my supply. I think it's um, a matter of, like, I've been so dehydrated out in this... Um, out in this hot area, and especially with having the ritual to remove the uh, the drugs from my body, I think it's really taking its toll. And I'm just like, I chug through way too much of my water, and I'm now leaving the spring where it all came from, and I'm getting away. So like, I won't have an opportunity to refill. And I'm like, I think in the, I also have to do this so quickly that I leave behind like they maybe had my pack there um, with my things, and I did not have time to grab it. So I'm now completely out of supply. But I reach a waypoint um, when it finally dawns on me like, oh, shit, I did get away from them, but I have I don't have anything. Anyway. Just get Timmy to go scavenge. Yeah. First, I need to find a Timmy. Welcome back, Bauer. Um, all right. Where is my little thingy? All right. Let us mark our progress on the get back to town. So we fill in two boxes here. Let me fill those in a little bit nicer. Because I that's that's just gonna bother me. I want it to be a little bit less outside of the box. It's only so perfect I'm gonna make this here. But anyway. Um so we we hit our first waypoint. We need to find out where it is that we found, however. Because it's not it's not just like, okay, we hit our waypoint, now we roll again. It's, it's not that. We need to find out what is this waypoint. So um, we're going to ask the Oracle and, uh, determine a little bit more about this location. So I'm on my way and we find a cave. That's not bad, actually. I think it's, you know, it's, it's turning towards night and it's getting a little bit harder to, um, yeah, I think it's getting a little bit harder to make use of anything. Like it's. I can't find my way. I can't see where I'm going. I'm just going to get more hopelessly lost. But I do manage to find this uh, this cave that I think goes, um, you know, just down under the sand a little bit into some rocks and uh, gives me a nice shelter. To uh, that hopefully is not too filled with with animals. We didn't we didn't have a uh, a pay the price, so I don't, it doesn't seem to be anybody's lair just yet. But um, it seems like a good place to to make camp. Unfortunately, to make camp, you roll your supply. Oh, right. I, uh, I had to burn my momentum to uh, make that a weak hit. So let me reset that. There we go. So I could try and make camp. 
unfortunately, there's like no way it works. I don't have any supplies. Uh, there's nothing I could do to really make camp and truly rest. But I can try and do the resupply move where I hunt, forage, or scavenge out in the wild. Uh, but that's a wits move, and that's another thing I'm terrible at. So, okay, Rick Coyote definitely needs a companion, and unfortunately, he left his behind. So, not especially intentionally, but kind of. He needs somebody to pick up the slack that he can't, and he is without that right now. Now, I'm considering there's also, um, what happens if I miss reaching my destination? Um, oh, no, that's, that's really bad. You don't want to do that. Moxie says, not enough cleavage, huh? Hey, welcome, welcome, Uda No Face. But I don't have enough cleavage? I mean, it's, it's true. Uh, I, it's hard though. You can't really show a lot of cleavage at the, I mean, I can, I can do chest hair, but no matter what, like these, these, these puppies don't come together, especially. Um, they, they, they're not cleft. They're, I'm trying. I agree. Not enough cleavage, but not anything I could take care of. Um, so yeah, how am I going to get out of this pickle? I need to, I need to find people that can help me. And unfortunately, the last ones I found, it did not go too well. So, um, one second. I, I basically need to find a different community. Oh, you know, it would be really shitty if I go out, if I, if I find the, uh, if I find the shadow bears and make friends with them instead, um, that would be the Coyote Devereaux kind of shitty way. Um, yeah. Honestly, I think he's he's going to do that kind of desperate thing. Um, so I think what's interesting about this waypoint, like to, to keep the narrative moving, I think we reach this waypoint and uh, it just so happens that, sure, he uh, he sees the the signs of, uh, of somebody who's used this cave before. And it, it, like there, there's like stuff left behind. So it, it looks like the type of thing where it's like they're out right now, but they're going to be back. And Coyote waits for that for that to happen. And eventually, um, oh, I may not have, uh, hmm. yeah. So it, eventually, I think it's a big enough cave that people like people plural can come in. So there's probably signs of like multiple people's stuff left behind. Just, like, personal belongings, nothing of, a spe of like, a lot of value. Because maybe the cave is not, like, the most immediately obvious type of thing. I don't know. Um, anyway. Eventually, this group comes back. And I think it, it's clear from uh, the kind of pelts that they're wearing. Um, there's some other, you know, nomadic group. I think he can infer that they might be the Shadow Bears just by, like, the... Uh, their general appearance. I think they've uh, they've got these just like black pelts on. They don't look like they were naturally black. Um, I think these were like brown bear pelts that have been somehow altered in a way that has fundamentally changed their properties and colors. And uh, interesting. I don't think these bear pelts look entirely um, like. I think we would know that bears would not be especially native to the area. And so they've either come from a very long way away or there's something else strange about like where they would have gotten these is there, there's some missing component here that we don't know about. And I've got some ideas about it as a GM, but we just, there's something missing here. And, um, but this, this big group of, uh, relatively strong people come in like they, they they way out muscle coyote and all that these are they're hunters they've they do things that coyote just can't um but he's in there i think they come back and they see him with his feet kicked up and he uh they walk in and he goes gentlemen oh am i glad to see you it is about time it's about time and very brusquely there's just a who the hell? 
Are you city man? Oh, city. Come on now. Settlement, maybe. But city? You've clearly never seen a city. Neither have I. But I don't find your antics amusing. Get to your point quickly. I think you'll like this point. The Blackfoots. Yes? What of them? What of their... What of their puny people? I know where they are. And I know their plans. And I'm willing to make an exchange for you. You help me, I help you. Is that, that simple enough for you? Do, do you understand what I'm laying down here? Do, do you think you can get on board with this in principle? Um... And so we're going to start this off with, as is often the case, a, um, a compel here. We're going to have to, we're going to persuade them to basically um, exchange their help with, uh, like, the directions and, like, getting Coyote back to the town where he needs to come from with, if Coyote gives them the information about... Um, you know, where they can where they can find the current Blackfoot camp and uh, everything that he knows about what they plan on doing. Uh, he's going to compel them to trade that for supply, like helping him, helping get him some supplies to get back on the road and the directions to go back. And uh, yeah, so let's, let's see if he can pull that off. All right, so there's another heart move. He's, uh, yeah, he's just bartering. I guess I'm looking through the options. He's not threatening or inciting. He's definitely not. He's not lying or swindling. He's just, he's desperate, and he doesn't have uh, any particular bond with those people. They seem nice enough, but they're not him, so whatever. All right, we have a weak hit on that, which turns into, as above, but they ask something in return. Right, okay, so this is the one where we get our plus one momentum. We move up on that chart a little bit. And they'll do what we want. They do want something more in return. What could they want? What does Coyote have? I mean, he is, um... He doesn't have any spirit. He doesn't have any supply. I mean, this is part of why he's just getting desperate enough to just turn on nice people like that. Um... Oh, you know what they would love? And maybe during the conversation, he says a little, like, it, it comes out a little bit about his, uh, his past and how he got in this situation. And, um, I think he still has a little bit left over of this red venom. And who wouldn't love a magical kind of turns your aggression up to 10 and makes you really strong and just chaotic drug, but a bunch of violent barbarians who they, they'd love that shit. Um, so yeah, I think they, they demand that he also turn over that rest of his red venom. Um, yeah. Um. Coyote's more than happy to do so. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to see that stuff right now. It's like the, after a night of too much drinking where it's like, oh my god, I just can't even think about that right now. Yeah, guys, take it. It's fine. Get it off my hands. I don't want it. So he gets rid of the last of his supply of that. Um, he gives them the information. Basically, like, we're not going to explore any of this on screen, but we know, like, he's fucked them. Uh, I think the one thing that the Blackfoots had going for them right now was that they were at least kind of hidden and being secretive and wary about their positioning. But uh, Coyote sold them out. We might see more of their uh, what happens to them later through just, like, extended effects of how that affects the world. But for now, it's enough to know that he's he sold him out. And, uh, yeah, I think they point him in the right direction. They give him that supply he needed. You see, that was part of the deal. We'll up that back up to a paltry one. Um, actually, hold on. Is there a... Yeah, I shouldn't do anything more than that because there's a 
there's a different move that could basically get me more supply, and I don't want to invalidate the use of that move by just wrapping it into a compel. Because you can recover two supply by provisioning with a sojourn move, or sojourn. Um, I don't know how it's pronounced. Um, but that is... That's not what I'm doing. That involves spending a lot of time in the community and all that. Like, that's... Um, actually, hold on. Uh, so when you spend time in a community seeking assistance, kind of... My impression is still that that is representing a longer period of time than what I'm really doing. Because you could also not be wounded. There's all sorts of stuff. So, no. I, I think it's enough of a bending of the rules that I got the plus one supply that we'll just go with that. Um, but I think he's ready to set off and uh, try and... Try and make it on the road. He'll just do one last thing to... I want to get that little bit more momentum and uh, yeah, if I can gather information by uh, like asking for a little bit more, like um, what is it? If I can secure an advantage with yeah, so like it charm them into giving some very specific de like not just like, be like go that because I think right now they're on the level of like yeah. Go that way. Ride until you hit civilization. Now get the fuck out of here. And I think he's going to try and secure an advantage on this, like, journey he's about to do by getting me like, hey, can you, can you be a little bit more specific? I mean, come on. I, I told you so many details here. Give me, uh, give me something for it. And, uh... Oh, actually... Yeah, no, I, I have various other ideas of what Coyote could do, but I think we're still just so much in that heat of the moment of, like, he needs to get back to town. He's, it's already been a question mark amount of time where his dad's been captive and everything's been going weird. He has no idea what, what could have happened. Um, so I think he's he hasn't had the time to do any of his, like, trickery and try to uh, kind of swindle them. So yeah, he's just going to try and ask them for more for information. Like, come on, man, I need something. The whole point is I'm already lost. So yeah, he just tries to charm them. Not successfully, though. Uh, they, they are not susceptible to that sort of charm. Uh, on a miss, you fail or your assumptions betray you. Pay the price. Um, there are various ideas I could have about how the, how the price could be paid. What what that might entail, but um, I would like I'm gonna roll on the there's a table I can roll on to see like where it is, what direction does this take? So a twenty three on this chart means your action has an unintended effect. Hmm. Oh, okay. I have the unintended effect here. So, my action, I give a little bit too much information about the town that I'm coming from, about it being Gibbet specifically, and I think somebody knows where that is, and, like, something about what I'm talking about and where, what I'm asking means that they, it's seen as a good idea to, like, you know, maybe, like, these seem like a raiding people. I think Gibbet might be getting raided pretty soon. Um... Okay, so I'm making a note to myself on that. Is next target for... Right, so Gibbet is the next target for the Shadow Bear raid. Cool. So they've got other priorities for now, but they're on the horizon. We have, we have kind of a ticking clock on the Shadow Bears coming to wreak havoc on Gibbet and uh, take what they can plunder. With that, with the secure advantage failing, let's uh, let's see if I can get lucky again and maybe reach a milestone to uh, to try and get back. But I, it's not looking good for for our buddy here. Um, it's either that or if I can. Okay. No, I think Coyote knows that he is 
He's in this situation because he's hopeless on his own. There's no way he's going to get out of this by himself. So I think he needs to try and convince them to send send a guide. And he's going to have to pay for it with um, something that he can do. Uh, how can he try and trick them into this? Um, okay. I think I've got an idea. I think Coyote is going to be very sneakily making it seem like he's not trustworthy. And here's why. Um, he doesn't want to outright say, like, hey, it's not like you can trust me. But he's, he wants them to start thinking about whether or not they can. Enough so that, well, okay, no, because then they just wouldn't let him leave. Um, but what if instead... So he's trying to trick them into thinking it's in their best interest to follow him. Um... Okay, well, maybe they start vocalizing their desire to uh, to go to Gibbet. And that that seems like a good place. And Coyote rolls with that and says, Well, I mean, you, uh, you're you going to want to scope the place out first, right? Before you before you show up in force, there's a, uh, there's a whole... There's a whole army there ready. If you come with me, I can show you a... Uh, I can show you the way in show you their weak points. If you show up in force, they're gonna, they're gonna, they won't notice two people riding out in the wilderness. You come up with your whole party, that's gonna stand out. They'll see you coming. They'll, they'll blast you away. They got, they got way too much weaponry for you guys, but you come with me, you find out the weak point, then you can come back in force and do it right. And Coyote's definitely lying about the existence of such an army that's ready for them, and plus he's trying to Get back to a point where hopefully Angel Face can just, like, shoot this guy and save him. So he's going to try and use his trickery to compel by lying. Compel them to send a guide along who can basically undertake the journey for him. Somebody with actual wits that can do this right. Um, so, yeah. Let's, let's roll that. We're going to roll his shadow... He gets a plus one because of his trickster path. Please succeed. Please succeed. Okay, it's at least something. It's a weak hit. We can't turn it into a strong hit. That's fine. So a weak hit on a compel, I believe, is that same. Like, they uh, they just want something for it. Um, but it gives us the plus one momentum. Just make sure I'm right. Yep, we get a plus one momentum. But they want something of me in return. Um, okay, so in return, what they want is, uh, I think they had, like, people, strangers who travel in this community have to make, like, a blood pact, and so, like, before I could, they say, like, yes, it should, you shall travel together, and before he even knows what's happening, there's, like, this big-ass blade that just, like, draws across Coyote's palm and opens it up, bringing me, bringing my health down by one, because, like, they cut pretty goddamn deep. The other person does as well, and we're like tight. Our hands are like tied together, and uh, as it's just like dribbling out the bottom of our palms, and uh, and we're, we're not bound with an iron vow on this, but certainly from their people's perspective, it's just like, and so shall the blood bring them together on their travels to the weak men. Something like that. I don't know. They've it's it's undoubtedly better than me just rambling like that, but. There, there's a big, you know, hurrah and everything as Coyote's just like, he's a much more frail person than any of them. So, like, he's not used to that kind of, it probably lets out more blood than he can really afford to give by comparison. Like, they, they can just take it. Him, he's, he's all frail and small. So, he, he takes a health as a result. Um, actually, you know what? No, because that's a, um... That's on the level of paying the price. And I did not have to pay the price. It was a weak hit. It wasn't a miss. Um, this is one of the rare opportunities, in the, rare times in this game, where I think I was actually being too hard on myself. And I uh, need to scale back a little bit. So it wouldn't be that. I think they still might do that, but it's not an amount that cost me my health. Um, but they have some other demand. 
And, uh, oh, okay. I think, all right, so these, these shadow bears, we talked before about how they're kind of weird. There's something going on. We don't even know where they got these bear pelts. There's a, um, there's a series of these, they're, they're, there's this pouch of bear claws. Not like donuts, but like the claws of a bear. You know, bear claws. It's in this pouch that is, um, that's given to my traveling companion. And, uh, and the traveling companion is told to make sure that when we get to the town, I place this in the, uh, in their, in their leader's camp. Um, and I have ideas about what this does. I don't think they say it out loud to Coyote right now. I think he's going to unlock, like, that's going to be something you might talk about along the way. But, um, basically, there's an item they need me to plant. It will do a thing. The, uh, the person it's been given to very much understands and nods and goes, Yes! Yes! Yes, it should be so! Um, and they're off on their own adventures. So, Coyote and we to give this, this person a name. I see them very much as having this, uh, short-cropped mohawk that goes all the way back the head. Um... Very sunken eyes and a, uh, I feel like this is a person that, like, he's very muscular, but his face is just so taut and bony. It's, it's just harsh. Um, it's like you can see the entirety of his skull with how sucked in. It's like you vacuum formed the skin on his skull. And it's just, everything is so angular and, uh, and, and just harsh about his appearance. And the rest of him is just, like, it's pretty muscled. And, um, uh, there's, there's a lot of just, like, intentionally done scars that kind of like make an artwork a lot that go down his arms and um and otherwise he's got the um he's got this you know bear pelt kind of cloak that's go hanging off his neck and um and i think there there is a a bear's head that you can like theoretically you can wear it like a hoodie and like put it over your head but right now it's it's, it's back it's not over right now i think that's more of a like a battle thing and not being worn right now so um yeah they set off on the road and now that he's got a companion who can do this for him he might be able to actually succeed in undertaking this journey so i think this person he was chosen because he could be a good scout i think that makes sense that his wits would be one of his high scores so we're gonna we're gonna say that they they're able to send a a a three wits person. It makes sense. Um, yeah, here we go. So I'm going to tell it I'm rolling hard just because that way it'll roll with the plus three. Um, so ignore when it says plus heart. Can we undertake this journey? Two and a nine. Well, we get a weak hit, which again, at least on a weak hit, we will make that progress. We're, we're fine. That's all we technically need. Except we immediately lose that supply that, that, that they provided us. So I get two more. Oops. So I fill in two more boxes. Oops. God damn. I wish I could zoom in on this a little bit more. Actually, I can, but then it will screw up my uh, display. So I fill in these two more boxes, but I lose the supply. And I think what that indicates is like basically along the road, the uh, like the supply they gave me, the additional food and everything. I think this. Uh, oh wait, we need a name for this guy. Uh, uh, Ton. I think they they go by the name Ton. Um, okay. God, I have so many just individual notes. Of like this is the name of this thing. This is the name of it. So Ton is the Shadow Bear Companion. A road Companion. Ton. T-O-N-N. If we were to... It's probably not spelled that way. Like, it might be a different alphabet. It may not even be written in a written alphabet, but that would be... If we were to try and write it out, that's how we would probably do it. T-O-N-N. Um... So, yeah, Ton... I think takes the opportunity like 
he's a hungry guy and a lot bigger and just like basically bullies coyote out of his food and like just eats through all the supply they've got already because he knows that if he needs to he can uh he'll be fine all on his own like he can go scavenge and hunt for himself and coyote is just you know so you can go screw um he's like you're he doesn't respect him enough for like carrying these kind of like just you you need to beg for your food you know, a, a real, a real shadow bear, you know, goes out and, and gets their food. We don't, we don't beg other people to provide it. And so he just, he just eats it and goes, you know, with weaklings like that don't deserve food is basically the way that that happens. Like until, until you learn to get your own food for yourself, you will starve weakling. I will get you there. But you may not like who you are by the time that happens. Yeah, so he just eats through his supply. <laughs> um, now, we could, in theory... Oh, we, we, we need to find out what this waypoint is. So they, they reach another waypoint. And um, I think... Now that we're, we're basically at a at a place where it makes sense that I think they might, they, I think a few days go by. Uh, they're, they're riding. They've maybe got like a horse that they share. And uh, it's a little bit awkward, but I think they eventually get back to um, the spot on the road. Like they, they start getting closer to town and coyote recognizes. Uh, actually, I don't know if the, uh, if it's been this long, they may not be waiting anymore. They may have, yeah. That opportunity may be lost. Okay. So he's not that far. We'll, we'll find out. We'll find a waypoint. So let's let's generate one. He needs to get back to town. They there he's now far enough out that it doesn't make sense to be like, eh, and we get all the way back to the road. They've just been waiting for like ten days. Um, so let's generate a location. A fen. I feel like a dumb person. I have no idea what that is. What is a fen? A low and marshy or frequently flooded area of land. Again, that doesn't feel quite right for this area. I know that we kind of determined that he's far out from where he's trying to go, but like... I don't think he'd be so far out that it's just like, and then we have this... Ge like, it shouldn't just be completely random geography. So, rather than... Is there a... I don't want, like a, I don't want it to be like a natural location. I want it to be... More of like a structure or something. Hold on, location descriptor, what's this? Let's, yeah, let's just go with that exposed. Um, okay. So I think along the way, they find a spot that is... Um, it's in the middle of this... Uh, it's, it's high atop this, it's this rock, not high atop, but like there's kind of a, uh, there's a stony ground and then like this big boulder perched on top of it. And it's a place that's like got just enough room for a person to stand. And, uh, yeah, just enough room for a person to stand. And Ton, like they've had some hard times on the road so far. They've probably been... The stealing of his food was not the only kind of aggressive thing that happened. Cody needs to try and make this better. And, uh... I think what he's going to say... Is, uh... Well, I want to look at these moves real quick again, because there's some so social stuff. He wants to... He wants to try and make a bomb with this person, but I don't think he's ready for that. So I need to, like, kind of set up to make that make sense. Um, but I, I think he, at some point along the road when they finally stop for the night and there's this rock nearby, um, that he says, cause he's starving at this point. I'll admit you seem like a very, very brave warrior. Far more so than I am. 
I cannot possibly compare. I'd I'd love to be able to learn, but that's something for another day entirely. But are you a man who is interested in challenges? I think his eyes light up at that a little bit because indeed, as somebody who's always gonna bravely step up and face challenges. I face all challenges. Well, that's good, because I've got a little bit of a... Well, it's almost like a game. Games are foolish and silly. I mean, well, well, then, if it helps, think of it as a challenge again. Fine, it's a challenge. But I've got an idea. You seem like somebody... A great warrior. How about, I want you to stand on that rock over there. It should be just enough room for you to balance. I, and Coyote picks up like five stones. And he starts, uh, I think he's, he's kind of dexterous. I, I think he, he picks up three of them. And uh, he starts juggling them a little bit. So I think he's, that's something he can pull off. And so he's juggling these stones and he goes, I got these three stones here. You stand atop that rock, and he does, like, a, a slick move where, uh, like, mid juggle, he, like, throws one really high up to give him time to, like, point to the rock, and then, like, uh, and then bring his hand back and catch it in time. Like, he, he's got the timing down. He's done this sort of thing before. Um, you stand high atop that rock. I'm going to throw these stones. I'll stand way back here and throw these stones. And I think if you can dodge... All three of these stones without falling off the rock. Then, if you can dodge all three of these stones without falling off the rock, uh, then I uh, then 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 I I don't get to eat tonight. I'll have to earn my if I want to eat. I'll have to earn my own food and go hunt it for myself. But and then he like catches all the stones and. Uh, in his arms and stops and you know cr cr puts him in the crook of his elbow and points at him. But if I can if I can make you fall off this rock, or if I hit you with a stone, then you have to do the hunting for the both of us. And I will I will eat tonight. You will not take my food. And, uh, yeah, Coyote's going to try and uh, compel him into this agreement. That they, he'll, he'll go along with this game, he'll face the challenge, and abide by the rules. Um, actually, I'm just going to say yes to this. Because, nah, no, nah, I, I, I want the benefits of a roll. Hopefully it'll work out. Um, but I, like, I, I really want this to work. I'd much rather it happen than if I just miss and they refuse. We'll have to come up with some kind of demand. But Coyote uses his, he's charming, pacifying, bartering. He's doing all that. It's, it's a heart thing. So he's going to roll his heart. Try and get the, try and get Ton to agree with this. There we go. There's the strong hit we need. Bam. Nailed it. So, we have compelled successfully. We get a plus one momentum. And... Uh, well, I guess that's that's it in this case. But he'll agree. <laughs> that's the important bit. So we have this little game, and uh, we're not going to do three individual rolls with this. It's just we're going to use a face danger because that's the closest thing we've got to like uh doing this, like throwing a rock at a person and trying to get them to dodge. Um. So I'm just going to put this all on how accurate is Coyote, not, like, how well can this guy dodge. We're just going to have this be player-facing. Um, but And all these three are just going to be wrapped up in this one roll. So with these three stones, like, can Coyote get what he wants? Or is he going to fail and he's going to have to do his own hunting if he wants to eat tonight? And uh, here we go. So he's using speed, agility, or precision. So it's a plus edge thing. Can he pull it off? We've got five momentum. We have a weak hit, and we can't turn that strong anyway. So, 
Weak hit, you succeed, but face a troublesome cost. Choose one. You are delayed, lose advantage, or face a new danger, suffer minus one momentum. You are tired or hurt, endure harm. That doesn't make sense. Or you stress, I can't even take that. Uh, or suffer minus one supply. I can't take that. I am... Yeah. Okay, well, I could certainly find a way to suffer minus one moment. Okay. I th I think I'm delayed on this because I'm a little too accurate. And I peg him, like, right in the fucking head. And just, like, uh... Have I died horribly yet? No, but it's not going great. Uh, well, welcome back, sir. Let's let your theme play. So no, I have not died horribly yet, however, wound up betraying the people and being finding out that I was wandering for way longer than I expected. I've potentially caused some major problems for my dad. He, he's maybe alive, who knows. Um, and I'm now, I've got a aggressive traveling companion that I just hit in the head with a rock. So, that's how it's going. He seems like he, he agreed to the circumstances, though. Um... The ones who I told to wait here or, uh, for betraying the other. So, I wound up finding this one tribe of people and getting worried that I wouldn't be able to... J check the VOD when it's all done, basically, I guess. Um, but some betrayals happen. Well, it's hard to even call it betrayal, considering we didn't know each other that well, but sort of. Um, anyway. I think I peg him in the head. And, uh... The delay is indeed just in tending to the wounds and all that before we can even do the hunting. Um, so we lose a little bit of momentum, the momentum that we gained on that. But we still gained that he's going to hunt for us. I'll, I'll actually get to eat tonight and all that. He'll find some wild pizza rolls for me and I'll be very happy. Um, granted, the wild pizza roll is not quite as delicious as the domesticated pizza roll that we have... Uh, that we, we have bred to be a more delicious pizza roll. But it, it'll still do the job. So. Basically, I'm having him do a resupply move. Where you hunt, forage, or scavenge, roll plus wits, and I, we can get some supply back. Um, so, again, the NPC is going to be making this roll on my behalf using his wits, which is equal to my heart. So I'm going to pretend I'm rolling heart here. There we go. Of course, everything about this guy is strong. He gets a strong hit. Take two supply. Yay! Resupplies our group with something. We can get these meters back up a little bit. Um, not loving that we have... We still only have two zero and two up there. Um, so I think it's that, but we still, like... We still have ways to go. We need to make camp. And so... A, uh... I think Coyote goes, like, he comes back with the food, and, uh, yeah, Coyote, Coyote will make camp. He's got the supply now to do it, so we roll our plus supply, which is with plus two, and, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Can we, can we make some good camp tonight? So my supply is equal to my iron, so I'm just gonna roll, or not my iron, my edge. So I'm gonna roll that and pretend. Oof. Oh, just barely. And we, ah, uh, mechanically, we're, we're just outside of the range of using our momentum. But I got a complete miss on this. Because, of course, Coyote tried it. So, of course, it was a miss. On a miss, you take no comfort, pay the price. So, theoretically, I could have had this opportunity to recuperate. You know, get some health for me and any companions. Uh, I could have... Wait, what? Hold on. Weird. Okay, hold on. Oh, I guess that... Alright, I... Never mind. I could have relaxed to gain back some spirit. I could have focused to get back some momentum. 
I could have prepared to for the journey, but unfortunately, no. We miss, and so we have to pay the price. Something about the way I made camp just went poorly for all of us. Um, so again, I'm going to turn to the pay the price uh, thing. I, I want some inspiration on this. Feeling a little bit out of ideas at the moment for like, well, what's interesting about the way that I made... Now, if you have any ideas, feel free to shout them out, but like, what goes poorly about the way we make camp? Now, it could be as simple as just like, it just takes up some of that supply we just gained. Like, pay the price doesn't have to be devastating. We could do that, but I'd rather something a little bit more interesting if we can. Let's see. Let's see what the random generator makes. An 88, which is, it wastes resources. Okay, well, even the random generator said it should just cost us supplies. So, yeah, it's just, you know, I make camp and make do, but you know, we're, we're now halfway through our stuff. Something about the way I do it is just like, I don't know what I'm doing enough, so I'm, I'm probably more wasteful than I need to be. So this goes back down. Yeah, just more wasteful than I need to be. I use, like, too much wood on the fire and uh, kind of maybe I help prepare the uh, the meat that he found, but I, I'm really inefficient in the way that I, that I dress the animal. And, uh, yeah, it's just it does not go well. It wastes more than it needs to. So we have a day. It takes up our supply. We don't get any particular benefit from camping. I'd love to get, if I can get just one more thing on my journey to get back to town, I'd be comfortable at least trying to do the thing. Um, so yeah, let, let's undertake one more journey. I guess now that we have somebody who's good at it, we don't really need to be as uh, stingy with it. Okay, so he'll roll undertake a journey for me. I want to try and get to town so that we can, next time we can, uh, we can find out all about what happened. We can like... My, my aim is get back to town just enough time to see, get a view of, like, what happened, what, like, how long was I out, and, like, how did things change, and then we'll break the session. Because we're almost at that time. But let's undertake a journey, try and, try and get there. We get one more weak hit as we set off on the road that next day. And, um... Let's see, weak hit, you reach your waypoint and mark progress, but suffer minus one supply... <laughs> So again, it just it's short lived. Um, it could potentially be another one of those like uh, a damn it, a bullying type thing where uh, like I think it was the waste of supply. I, somewhere along the road, like it comes out in conversation, like uh, going over how how little we have left, and and Tan realizes this and that there should be way more. He gra he grabs so much more, and he's pissed about it. What do you mean that's all we have left at this point? You, you do not respect the work that goes into actually receiving the bounty that we live off of. Until you respect this, you will have no more. You, you will be going for the supply, for the hunt tonight. I will not help you. Clearly you do not appreciate it, but you will learn to. And he's just, like, is eating up the rest of the supply and goes... And he's, like, eating meat raw and everything. He's like, give a shit. Just like, I'll already come back with nothing. Fine by me. I'm already plenty fed. It's you you have to worry about, weak little skinny man. You and your people have gotten far too comfortable in your settlements. But soon we will teach you what such weakness opens the door for. And he, like, rattles the, uh, the little bag of teeth that he was given by, by the chief. Um, but we do reach our, we do reach our new waypoint. And it's probably at this point that it, uh, that that whole conversation happens. We're, like, we're getting ready to set up camp, and Coyote's like, Hey, I don't really have a lot of stuff to set up camp. Sorry. We're, we're kind of running, we're running low already. Well, wouldn't you know it? Um... So yeah, he needs to he needs to go resupply. But first, we need to find out one more time what kind of location have we reached. We we've hit various kind of stops along the way as we're just kind of rediscovering every time, like, where the hell are we? Um So I have another oracle here. For another location descriptor, which is a good just like way to get inspiration on these. Diverse. Um I 
I think we he takes us over to a ridge. And uh, on this ridge, we can overlook. There's like a uh, a small watering hole or something. Uh, nothing that's wonderful, but I think the diversity is in a lot of different types of animals. There's various birds there. Um, there's uh, some kind of more like four-legged creature there that's uh that's taking a sip from the water. Like there's just there's various options of what to hunt. Some faster but would provide more meat, some just more small and gamey. So yeah, I think that ever he he's like points them all out and goes, "What would you, you have your pick of what's down there? How would you do it? How would you close the gap and get what you want with your bare hands?" Your bare hands. I, that's like the first time he's ever heard that pun. Because uh, he's not a very civilized person. He thinks it's way funnier than it is. Coyote's just like, you done? I, how would I do it? Well, if I really wanted to, if I wouldn't do it with my bare hands. I'm telling you, civilization's not such a bad thing. I'd use, I'd use a gun so I could get him from here. So I don't have to go down there. You would choose the coward's way, then. Yeah, you know what? You've got the right of me, man. I'm a coward. I'm a weak little coward. But here I am, and here you are. We're all together. We just got to face the reality of the situation. That's how I would do it. You're telling me I got to go down there and hunt. What, so you can just have a laugh at me? No. I'm just going to stay up here. If we, uh... It's... No, man. I... We're almost there. I can... I can see us getting... Stuff's starting to look a little bit more familiar. This is more the landscape that I remember. I'm not going to be humiliated. And I'll tell you what. You take my food again. You've been falling asleep earlier than I have been. I can hit your... I can hit your head with a rock mighty, mighty, mighty fine in your sleep. Don't keep doing that shit. I'm not going to stand up to it anymore. I can peg you once... I pegged you once, I'll do it again. And Cody is just going to compel him to uh, to basically just stop being a dick. Like he's he already made his bed in the like I'm not he's not hunting today like that. Uh, that's not going to change. But to stop taking every little thing that they find for himself, that he's like I'm doing everything I can. I'm do I'm fulfilling my part of the bargain. I'm going to help you. I'm going to get you where you need to go. Help your people place your little pouch or whatever. But leave me the fuck alone. I'm a coward, but you, you know what happens when you when you push a weak little coward back into a corner and you make him starving and desperate? Eventually, even a weak little coward lashes out. And it's the people that you expect to not be able to do anything that are the most dangerous. Because when they snap... Oh, man. You don't want to be in that situation. Just leave me alone. Let's see if he's uh let's see if he's successful. That charming him to just like could you not be a dick about all of this? Not at all. Not even a little bit. I think that uh the suggestion that he that he might snap and uh take this Oh, so cowardly, just throwing rocks at his head. Um, it's a complete miss. They refuse or make a demand which costs you greatly. Uh, I think he takes this as quite the challenge. To Coyote suggesting that when backed into a corner, he would possibly be able to take this guy. I think he calls him on that kind of bluff. He goes, Is that how you see it? You see yourself as the feral animal that will get the best? Let me tell you something coyote and he like puts on the uh the bear pelt's head he like puts on the this hooded section and uh and his eyes widen and we again we've described his head as being this very harsh like it's like his skin was vacuum formed over his very angular skull and uh i feel like that comes out all the more during this or just like the light hits his face like the shadowiness kind of makes certain features occluded a little it just Cuts a very intimidating face as uh, he like stands up and backs Coyote into a uh, into that corner and goes, "You, if you, I have dealt with my share of feral creatures, 
and proven my capabilities. And, uh, you know, gestures to... I, I don't even know if he gestures to the bear pelt so much. It just very heavily implies it. I have it in me. You do not. If you have this capability, show me. Show me now. Just went to bed real... Well, no, I, I think what's going to happen... We're going to see for the first time what happens when you lose spirit when you don't have any more to lose. Because I think he intimidates the shit out of Coyote and he's going to cost him spirit, but he can't pay it. So, um, what happens when you endure stress and you can't? Um, so when you face mental shock or despair. Scat Pilgrim learns the power of self-respect. Sadly, no, not so much. Welcome back, Romage. have a new thing that I'll be uh, never seen happen before. There we go. So, welcome back from Maj. Um when you when you endure stress, you suffer spirit equal to your foe's rank or as appropriate to the situation. So I'm just gonna have it like we are it's technically nothing that would be happening right now. Um, I think his rank would be, he'd still just be a, if we called the wolf troublesome, he would be a troublesome foe. He's nothing too dangerous. So troublesome foe, we, we'd lose one stress, um, but we don't have that. So, uh, we lose momentum. How we lose the amount of momentum that we basically can't afford to spend in stress. So we, we lose one momentum and we need to roll plus spirit or plus heart, whichever is higher. Our heart is much higher than our spirit, which is out. So uh, we'll, we'll roll our plus heart, and let's consult this table. Oh, cool. Strong hit. On a strong hit, uh, you shake it off. If your spirit is greater than zero, suffer minus one momentum in exchange for plus one spirit. Or, but it's not. Or embrace the darkness, take plus one momentum. Um... So we only have one that's possible. We, we don't have greater than zero. So embrace the darkness, take plus one momentum. So we lose momentum, but then we gain it right back somehow. I'm not entirely certain. So I need some help. Chat, what is the, what is the darkness that we embrace here? Is the darkness that, like, maybe it's not in this moment, but we... Maybe we... Maybe the darkness that we, we swear to ourselves that, like, he's right... Or he, he thinks is right, but I will kill him. Um, he, I'm going to wait till he gets me where I need to go. But he's he I'll prove to him the uh, the higher the hard way that you can't back people like me into a corner. When I get back in town, uh, I'll show him. Um, exactly, it's definitely embracing the darkness. That he won't just beat him; he will end him. Um, we could swear that as an iron vow, but I don't, I don't know that he would swear on iron ab about that. I think it's just a thing that he's going to do. That being said, a flashback to the poison, the, uh, but the red venom. Oh, the, uh, oh no, no. The like things that we've made that yes. You're right. Uh, the uh, the things that have been unfortunately poisonous, and yeah, we get that memory of the uh, the town that he had to flee because all the all the kids died because of his snake oil that turned out to be poisonous. Yes, exactly. We get a glimpse of that. Like he coyote knows that uh, it's not the first time that he's had that he's well not had to kill somebody, but wound up killing somebody, and uh, he knows that if if this person thinks that he's just some weak little coward he won't be expecting the trickery of uh like he he knows that he can uh he can trick him basically not that necessarily they wouldn't be expecting it but this guy is not exactly a strong mind though he does have high wits anyway um does he swear on iron for this you know what yeah as long as I'm going to do something in this game, you might as well earn experience for it, right? 
So let's let's make an iron vow. I think it's in the middle of the night. It looks like we won't have enough time to get back to town, but we'll, we'll be able to wrap this up. So later that night, they do indeed sleep, and Coyote, is, his stomach is rumbling and everything, and he's looking at this uh, empty pot where they would have cooked, uh, cooked their food on the, on the fire. And he's, like, rubbing the, uh, the burn spots on his hands and, uh, and looking over to the sleeping and snoring form of Tan. And it's when it, this is the moment where it hits him that he's like, I, I won't be seen like this. He, I'm not going to, I won't be laughed at. I, this isn't my venue, but I will find a way. And he just like, he, he does touch that pot. And he's going to make this iron vow that he, he will end this person's life and will, uh, I think that the, the fullness of it is to make it a full-on iron vow. It's not just that he will end uh, Tan's life. It's that he knows that the the other shadow bears are going to invade this town, right? So it's you know I will, I will def his iron vow is that he will lead Gibbet to the def to defeat the shadow bears starting with Tan. So let's write down that vow. I will defend Gibbet against the Shadow Bears starting and, or and kill Ton. There we go. So he's just he's come to realize over the course of this journey that it's like yeah, he's getting what he needs in the moment out of them, but, like, they're really not nice people. And not in a kind of charming sort of way like he and his father have leaned into from time to time. Like, they're not nice people either, but at least on a personal level, they tend to interact with other human beings well, whereas all of his interactions with the Shadow Bears have just been these utter assholes that, like, even in the moment, they just, they bully you. They steal your food, they make fun of you, and just, like, it's this moment where he realizes, like, he he wants to stand up against them and do do right by by the people that he knows in that town. He's He's got business there that's not done, and he likes them a hell of a lot more than the Shadow Bears. So let's let's make this Iron Vow to get that started. Um, that feels like a dangerous one. Um, they, there are people. Actually, let's call it formidable, because I think there, we got a little bit of a delay. Um, he beats him to death right then. Well, that depending on how this goes, that might be the beginning of it. Uh, because, yeah. Anyway, he might do that. I'm gonna call this a formidable challenge, because I th I think the Shadow Bears like they're they're a pretty decent sized force and they're not to be fucked with. And there's something going on with them that is more than meets the eye. They have some kind of powers that was even alluded to by the uh, by the Blackfoots that there's there there are powers that were strange and unknown and it didn't even want like he mentioned earlier in the stream this totem that they're carrying that he's like don't even bring it like I just destroy it so there's some kind of you know black magic kind of stuff going on that I think they're going to be a force that we definitely need to do preparations before defeating um so let's swear that vow and see how it goes and then I'll wrap this stream up so. His hands are around the iron. Um, roll plus heart. Come on. Weak hit, and I, I can't get that. Okay, weak hit. On a weak hit, you are determined, but begin your quest with more questions than answers. Take plus one momentum and envision what you mu what you do to find a path forward. So with that being what it is, I don't think he would take this up. I think he still knows, like, on a one-on-one -on -one fight, if I, I can smack him in the head, but then he's just, he's just going to fight me. And, like, I'm going to lose. This isn't my situation. I don't have the materials right now to be able to just, like, poison him or anything like that. Besides, I need his help getting back to town. So I don't think it's about just killing with the pot right now. He's, uh... I 
I think the path forward is... Okay. The path forward is he knows that this the the claws in this bear in this pouch the bear claws in this pouch that he was said he needed to uh, place in the in the town. He's getting this feeling like there's something important about them, and uh, he needs to make sure that doesn't happen. And so Tan is sleeping there with the with the pouch around his around his neck. It's like on a drawstring. And Coyote realizes that this is his opportunity to make a switcheroo. Replace the, steal the claws out of that bag and replace them with something else that just has like a rattling sound. Because it's usually cinched up, you can't see what's inside. And he thinks Ton won't necessarily check to see the inside. And by the time he does, maybe Coyote will have some backup. So, Coyote realizes the thing he needs to do first is switch out these claws. And I want to end the stream with the uh, with this last thing that he's going to try and do. So, Tan is asleep. Coyote is going to face danger here. Um, or uh, he, maybe he's not asleep yet, because I'd love to set up this move first and try and secure an advantage. Um. I think that uh, maybe there's like just enough food left that um, there's just enough food and supply and like and drink and everything that Coyote. We've talked before about how he has this like um, he's got some just like this bandage that he wears around his head to kind of fake that he's always more injured than he is. Though at this point he actually is pretty injured. Um, and he, he tends to keep these small objects hidden underneath the bandage. And we never know what he's going to pull out. But um, I'm trying to think if there's some way. Because I wanted to basically like spike his food or something. But I'm just, I, I can't see a reason why he would have the right equipment to be able to do that with what he has. Um, let's see. How else could I secure an advantage? Um Yeah, I, I don't know that I can really. <laughs> no, nah, I'm not going to do that sort of thing. But, yeah, I, I can't think of an appropriate way to get, a, get an advantage here. Not in the way I want to, anyway. And I can't think, is there... Well, I guess I really am using Deception, Stealth, and Trick. Like, this is very much a stealth thing. Um... Oh, and I already have... I'm, I'm stealing. Oh, this is perfect. I'm a trickster. I get my plus one from stealing. I am stealing the claws out of this bag, so I don't need an advantage. I'm already set up on this. I'm, I'm already doing the thing I need to do. So in the middle of the night, with a plus one help because I'm a trickster, I roll my shadow with five momentum. Got pretty good odds on this to see if I can steal the, uh, the claws out of the bag and replace them with something else that would have, uh, like, pebbles or something that have a sufficient rattle, like something that just sounds similar enough and has a similar weight. Perfect. Okay. So we just got a critical hit. Because when you roll doubles in this game, it's either, it becomes a critical. And in this case, because we succeeded, a critical hit. So, not only do I steal, this is the perfect opportunity for it to finally come out. Not only do I steal the pebbles, out of the, uh, the teeth out of this bag and replace them. I feel like I'm going to get some special insight into what these do. Um... I don't know offhand. Blink, thank you for the host, though. I'm literally about to wrap up the stream. I appreciate it, though. Um, so let's see. I want to ask the oracle on this. There's an oracle that I have here that is a couple of things. I want... It's Mystic Backlash. It's not going to be literally Backlash, but I want to... I want to get the, use this as inspiration for, like, what... What blink do I get out of this? Like, what is the what is the moment where it becomes clear to me, like, oh shit, that's what these teeth do? Because I have an idea as the uh, storyteller here, but I want to see what it what it does. What moment does this bring out? 
Your ritual reveals a surprising and troubling truth. Well, that's kind of fitting. You just want to say hi, you're about to go sleep? All right, well, well thank you for saying hi. And uh, have another good sleep tonight. Your ritual reveals a surprising and troubling truth. So, I think that um, I hold these teeth and the, um, the all of the lands, since they're just touching my skin like this, starts to have a more shadow. It's like I can see beyond the veil into uh, the more more of the spirit lands. And I can see, like, I'm not in there, but I, I can, like, sort of see that overlaid on top of everything else that I've got. Oh, I just realized Blink's theme would be uh, playing right now. Uh, was playing. I was talking through that. Sorry about that. I don't have my headphones on, so I'm not actually hearing the theme tonight. I'm just trying to look at the meters and be like, okay, it's done. So as I can sort of see the spirit world overlaid, or as Coyote can see the spirit world overlaid on top of this, he sees this, like, tendril. There, there's, like, a um, an opening at the teeth that seems to, like, open and close. And it's this three-dimensional thing that connects to this pipeline that, like, seems to just travel through the lands, through these weird shadowy lands, and uh, connects back to where we came from. And I think he's gets he gets an idea that, like, this would basically allow it's like a it's like a portal through the uh, through the mystic lands to be able to come there immediately. Um, so you, you plant a beacon and you can like return there if you do the ritual right. Um, but that this is really tainted with like these are these are dark powers that like there are uh, I think all these shadowy forms that like as he's holding them in his hand and like looking around and judging these lands, all these forms start just like coming up and looking over their shoulders at him and like observing him and um and one of them one of them like flicks down into uh like suddenly goes across and like wisps across the land and forms right back in front of him and says he, he takes the form of this uh this gambler in a like a, a huckster in a suit like a uh, a card shark he's all just like dapper and and basically looks roughly like um like doc holiday would in like tombstone and um yes it is i would consider myself an a anyway not the uh i'm an ally i'm not any of the of the first stuff but i'm an ally uh and everybody should be who should feel comfortable in this place so yeah this guy who looks more or less like doc holiday would in terms of just general clothing and appearance and all all of that says oh now 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 i don't think you're ready for all of that and i think it's startling enough when that happens that the claws um like tumble out of his hands and like he recats them and like uh like stuffs them in his pockets and like it all all the world goes back to normal and he's like heavily breathing um and there's just this whisper in his ear that he can barely make out it's, it's like it's coming from somebody behind him that just says You'll be ready someday. Come see me again. Um, anyway, I think that is where we'll actually leave off tonight and uh, head back into this view. So I thank you for joining me tonight. We do this every Saturday night. We've got this game, Iron Sworn Western Frontier. As I do every week, I ask you, hey, did, this, did the system kind of intrigue you? Was this uh, something that that you could enjoy this ability to play an RPG kind of all by your lonesome, just using the random roles and generators to help inspire a story. I plan basically none of this. It all comes out in the moment. I have no idea what's going to happen, but there's enough stuff going on in the games that keeps me inspired. It's really cool. If you are looking for the same sort of thing, this RPG is 100% free. It is available at www.ironsworenrpg.com. Free PDF, free all sorts of helps, uh, it's not a tricky or long read. It's really cool. Um, I very much enjoy it. That's fine. Uh, if you missed it, like Blink and Firefly said, and you're interested in catching up, we've had a few different sessions. They are all available on YouTube. This one will be up there later tonight. It'll take a little while to upload, because I gotta make the video and all that. But, um, but yeah, the, the videos are available on my YouTube. The link to that is down below. I'll be back to do this again next week at the same time, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, I hope to see you guys there. It's it's a fun time. We're, we're continuing the story that's gotten very far. Like, every time I take a step forward, it feels like I take two steps back. But it's, it's making more and more intriguing, interesting developments. 
And I think we're finally going, like, we're going to hit a point where we, we, like, finish various of our goals all at once. And I'm looking forward to that. Um, but otherwise, many of you know I do other kinds of streams around here. The next one that will definitely be happening is tomorrow night's cello stream, uh, which, of course, happens 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, we take cello requests for four hours and have lots of fun with you guys and usually have an after party. I know we didn't last week. Um... Then, yeah, more stuff during the weekdays. Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 3 to 5 p.m. we do stuff. Yes, cello. That'll be happening tomorrow. And uh, you should get it in while, while it lasts. Because, not while it lasts, but, like, get in the streams while you can because there's certainly specifically for Iron Sworn. Um, we will be back next week, but there's going to be a couple of weeks where I'm going to be busy on Saturdays uh, and Sunday. So... I'm here this weekend. I'm here next weekend. The weekend after that is when I'm out of town for Lockdown's wedding. So in two weeks' time, I'm going to be missing both Saturday and Sunday and Friday of that week. Uh, I should be back in time. So I'm, I'm going to miss three of those streams that week. Um, and then the week after, I am likely going to be out of commission on Saturday as well. I've got some developing plans to go scuba diving again. So that should be a lot of fun, but it does mean that I'm very much not going to have time to do this stream. So... Uh, so we'll have next week to continue this story and hopefully resolve a little bit of this stuff that we're doing. But after that, it's going to be a couple of weeks off. So, yeah. Anyway, you still need to get, you should, you should totally get certified. Then we can, we can go do scuba more. Like, I'd love to have a partner to go with more often. That'd be awesome. Go do that. Uh, it's, it's fun. And far more fun to do it with people you know, I assume. I guess I haven't actually done that. So I'm taking that on faith. Uh, but anyway... I will see you all tomorrow for, uh, for the cello times. And, uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed, and I hope to see you back next week. Remember, ironsworn.rpg.com. Go check it out. Support Sean Tompkin. If you really liked the, the RPG system and want to help both my stream out and give support to the, uh, to the person who has put this product out for free, uh, tweet Sean Tompkin at, uh, let me see, let me find his, his Twitter again. I think it's just at Sean Tompkin, S-H-A-W-N-T... O M P K. Let me check on that. Um, yes. S H A W N T O M K I M. I'm going to put it in chat right now. Tweet at him and be all like, uh, how about, Hey, I really liked your game. And there's a great version of it. Uh, <laughs> I, I enjoy watching it on Twitch, uh, through midnight. You can, you can help both of us out that way. Uh, so yes, Sean Tompkin this is his Twitter. www.ironsworn.rpg.com is the uh is the url you're going for and otherwise yeah i will i'll see y'all tomorrow and have a good rest of your weekends guys and gals and everywhere in between and neither <laughs>